This video is all about getting you to the good stuff in your call as fast and as simply as possible. Okay, it ain't really about sounding like a bird. Because what you want to do first is not sound like one. You want to learn to run the call inside its design. Okay, and it was designed to do two things, to handle two things. One of them is voiced air. This. <coughs> is clear air this <laughs> that's up to you okay red bone red bone don't red bone don't sell that that comes from you okay so clear is pretty simple it's just it's just an open exhale into this hole right here okay the weight of your exhale into that hole when you blow up a balloon if you were blowing up a balloon it blew, that balloon is kind of hard to blow up you kind of like <laughs> Oof, you'd be kind of leaning like, okay? Not straining, really, but just letting your body push the air into the call. That's what this is. You put that the weight of your exhale on the tip of that reed down in there, okay? You want to feel the tip of that reed when you load your air in there, okay? That's a big deal because it's not about blowing hard. It's about leaning. It's about pushing on the air and sustaining that pressure, Okay, it's not about big puffs of air. It's not like that. Okay? And you, you want to teach yourself to blow, blow a call that way because it's unlike, it's not like calling ducks. And probably not like you call specs before. Okay, so you want to teach yourself to sustain the pressure and cut back and forth out of clear and scratch air, clear or voiced air. And this exercise teaches both things. Okay? So if you're just driving down the road, if you got an hour drive to work, an hour drive in the afternoon, you got two hours of good practice because you can hold on that steering wheel with one hand and hold this call by this little brass band if you get a black gold or a golden oak and voice clear into the call. I mean, ain't nobody in there with you, so you ain't no need to be embarrassed about making a loud noise. Just like you're collapsing into it. You want to feel the reed. Push the air down in there. Pucker your lips up and stick them in this hole. Don't let any air out go. Don't, don't let air out on the sides. Okay? Pucker up and put a little hole. It's kind of like a, um, a high pressure, low volume pump. Okay? Like that nozzle. You squeeze that down with your lips to energize that air, to speed it up. Okay, so you ain't got to, you don't have to blow as hard as you can if you nozzle that air down and speed it up because the speed is the energy. Okay, it's not about how much, it's about how fast. Okay. So the big voice. <coughs> in the clear. to be coming from the same place okay you don't want to be blowing the big you blow that big voice from down here and then blow that blow the clear from up here come from right here that's where your voice is in that little box God gave you right here okay and follow it clear that five million times if if that's all you did with your new two hundred dollar spec call for a month you go back and forth to work uh, four days a week or five days a week you get two hours to practice every day so you'd be doing eight hours practice a week four weeks that's about 30 about 30 hours will probably get you there but the trick is uh, what your goal is is to get the scratch as scratchy as you can and the clear clear because you want a gigantic difference in the two <laughs> Super important. If you can't do that, I mean, you, you probably still kill some. I mean, because you can blow it in any kind of. That's what, I mean, you can blow it like a Shanghai or a Haydale or a Hoo Hoo Ha Ha or whatever you're going to use. It's going to sound good in there. Believe me, they got a lot of good stuff built into that. But you start running a sustained pressure and leaning on that reed, you're going to you're going to be surprised how good you can sound.
Okay? Sustained pressure. <laughs> Always start on a scratch, end on a clear, because this starts on a scratch and ends on clear. Okay, you hear people make all those complex noises and all that, all those strange sounds. Everybody says, ooh, that sounds so good. Oh, all they've learned to do is this. And practice it enough so they can roll it over quickly. Okay. And what else was it? Um... Oh, is so. all. Oh, the hands. Let's do hands. All right, now when you. Hands are going to be yours. You're going to figure out. Everybody got a different voice. Everybody got a different load. Everybody got a different way of presenting air. So everybody's going to have to have a different set of hands. My hands don't work for somebody else because they don't have my other stuff. Your hands go along with all the stuff you got. All right? My hands, I want to show you the way I do it, and it might be a good place for you to start figuring it out. Okay? See that little curve? That little curve is for this. Your the This side of your thumb goes in that little curve. This is how I do it. Is this the best way? Mm, probably not. Is it the only way? Uh, surely not. It's, but this is my way and it works. Put it. You put that groove on your thumb. All right. Then drop your. Put it in that crotch right there. Mash it in that crotch. Get some meat. Get it up against that meat. Close your fingers around it. And this, you want closer to that end of the insert because you're going to play your saxophone with this finger here one of these days you're going to want to have access to the end of this insert with this right here it's going to be important to you one of these days not not right now but will one of these days so get your grip for that see how far it is from the band finger in the insert pull it out don't move your fingers these fingers right here they never touch your palm never see right here they don't touch your palm this one got to touch the ball of your thumb so your call don't fall out your hand but these three right here they don't touch your I would suggest that you don't touch them okay and see they're not like this it's not a fist it's this see it not this this that's a big deal all right, now you can roll that hand over in the front. It, it works good like that. But the new red bones, they don't require a lot of front hand. And you can blow it like that. But I like to blow mine with, with as little front hand as I can, and that's just me. Um, so what I do is I take this trigger finger, and I put it in this groove. The groove between my finger finger or my middle finger and my ring finger is where my trigger finger my off hand goes right here okay so I wind up with something like this and and an important thing is it touch back here see the balls of your thumb put your thumbs together keep your thumbs together develop some pressure by keeping your thumbs together if you don't and your hands are open like this all the pressure goes down Okay, it goes in the blind or in the box or at your feet. You want it to go that way, okay? So keep it pressurized by keeping your thumb balls of your thumbs together. And then when you were doing this, going down the road.
road after work holding like a cigarette. Now you put that grip on it and do exactly the same thing. <laughs> And you will find that those hands change it from to this. All right. If it's, if you're getting something like you're too closed, open. You got the Mickey Mouse going on. Your hands are too close together. good for one. He's breaking it. He's training it. Okay. Then this one in the second groove. Okay. Now hey, you're gonna work your own hands out. All I can do is show you how I do it. Okay. But if you will learn this, <coughs> learn that properly, and then whatever grip it takes for you to get this noise, <coughs> that's your grip. Okay. Might not look anything like mine. But those are the three things that'll get you going on your call. Big powerful voice. Uh! If you're embarrassed to do that, you need to see a psychiatrist or something. Make the sound into the call. <coughs> Lean on it. <coughs> then clear. Big old breath. Take a deep one and blow it all out while you're doing that. Teach yourself to su to sustain. Nozzle them lips down. Okay. High pressure, low volume pump, and run that exercise. Okay. When you when you start to really feel it, <coughs> then hands. Okay. Exercise then hands. How it? No matter how you hold it. If it makes this noise, if your exercise changes from to this, you're holding it right. No matter what it looks like or what anybody says, okay, you're holding it right. Okay, so you got now you got your grip. You're starting to work on your grip. Now you want to listen to yourself go through everything that the call will do, pressuring up and pressuring down. Why you got your grip on it. And this is how you're going to uh, fine tune your grip. Is by blowing the elk bugle. After you've done that. After you've done scratch clear, scratch clear. Or what we call the exercise for a long time. Hours. Okay. Until you know that you must have it. You got it. Okay. Then you want to start thinking about an elk. Okay, like you see them hunt on TV with the big horns and all. Try to make an elk bugle. An elk bugle is going to, if you can blow an elk bugle correctly, you blow them through your whole call. Okay, because it's going to start soft and scratch. Or not soft and scratch, I shouldn't say that. It's going to start in scratch, and then the pressures are going to gradually increase. And as you increase pressure, you're going to hear a change in tone. Okay, you hear the you you start you start realizing that or start association of pressure with a tone, and as you climb up 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 up, then you'll feel your call reach the reach its upper limit. Okay, because you you'll everybody has a little different upper limit in them. You reach that upper limit, you want to hold it. Teach yourself to hold. Okay, and then you ease off the pressure and come back down. The opposite of this side, you're coming down now until you go back into scratch like you started with. So it's just a big old bell curve. Okay, that's what you want to do. And that's, that's, 
That's an elk bugle. But kinda. Okay, I mean it ain't exactly like one. But it's it's a shape that does this and then the opposite shape that does this. Okay, you're going up in one pressure on one side of it and down in the other. Big deal to understand how to blow softer. Okay, anybody can load up, but blowing softer is a big deal. And the elk bugle will teach you where the tones are in relationship to the pressures in your call. Okay, elk bugle's a good deal to practice. <laughs> And it teaches sustain. It teaches you to blow a whole big old breath instead of. <laughs> you might you're going to kill something like that. People kill them like that all the time. But <laughs> ain't. <laughs> it's just not the same thing. Okay. So two. The in and out. The the exercise. <laughs> Big old scratch. Oh! Okay. And you see this? You see this blowing? That's letting your body lean on the reed or lean on the air column that you're pushing on the reed. Okay. So you ain't. It's not that. It's you putting it all in that hole, and it's you putting it in this little hole right here through a little bitty hole in your mouth. That's why it looks like you're blowing hard because you're forcing a lot of pressure through that little hole, not a lot of air. Got it? That's why you can sustain it. Okay, you can you can do it for that long because there's an effort, but that little hole prevents you from dumping big volume or big amount. It's little hole, high pressure. Okay? That's a big deal. If you get that down, you're going to be surprised how good you can blow a spec call. And forget about calling like a spec. ain't got nothing to do with this for right now. Two big exercises. And the elk bugle to start teaching control. How to climb in pressure, how to fall in pressure. All right, that's big ones. You learn, you get, you get good at that. You probably, you, you, you'd be able to call us back about this. There ain't no doubt about that. All right, my name's John Chassel, and I'm gonna demonstrate some of the uh, new characteristics of the 2015 Redbone call. Um, the thing you got to remember, you may have to forget or try to forget some of the old habits you may have on other particular calls that you've blown in the past. Um, I've had to do this myself. Um, and These new calls will accept about ju just any air presentation that you put into it. However, there are some recommendations that we recommend uh, to optimize the usage of this call um, and to shorten the learning curve of how to, how to run the call. The first thing we're going to start with is the voice. Voice, scratch, rasp, murmur, however you want to term it. It's putting an audible voice into the call. <laughs> Mr. Nathan said in previous videos it comes from right here you're gonna feel something going on in your throat just like if you talk and you put your finger right here you're gonna feel vibrations over your voice box or your larynx um, and you need to translate that vibration into the call because if you put just air <laughs> makes a nice tone but it doesn't have that raspy quality 
No voice. Voice. Then you bring the hands into the equation. Whatever hand position you use, and you're going to have to experiment, whatever hand position you're able to make this sound, That's the position you need to try to yodel with after you learn, after you first learn how to use scratch or get the call to go into scratch by the use of voice. That brings us to the next exercise. So the first thing when you first get the call is trying to get some audible voice into this call. All right, once you get this sound, after you get that rattle sound into the call, then you want to work on sustaining it over a period of time. So take in a deep breath. And the next thing you're going to learn is the exercise how to turn on the voice, then turn off the voice, then turn back on the voice. You don't move your hands, you leave them in the same position that you found this. You do that and then you slowly turn off the voice and it's going to go into clear. You should hear my voice going in and out and in and out and in and out. You're thinking, well, that doesn't sound anything like a speck. Well, that's not the, the point of the exercise. The point of the exercise is to reinforce, number one, being able to make the scratch sound or voice or, or murmur, however you want to term it. And number two, how to, to get your body accustomed to doing this over time. Okay, so we're leaving any burst method that you may have employed before and going into something that is sustained over time so it's shapeable. And this exercise teaches how to elongate this airstream. is voice going into clear, going into voice, going into clear, going into voice. Uh, he, uh, he, uh, he. 
So scratch, turn off the scratch into clear, turn the voice back on. You don't stop the effort going into the call. You keep the fuel going, but scratch to clear to scratch to clear to scratch. Then we go to something called the elk bugle, and this is where you figure out just how much range there is in your particular call. So you're going to start taking a deep breath, you're going to start in voice, and then you're going to keep going, and you're going to push into clear, then you're going to keep going, keep going, and keep going. I'm going to try to demonstrate this. <coughs> tells you how much you have in the call but it also gets you accustomed to feeling what the effort feels like to obtain whatever pitch level you're going for and this is going to be individual based okay there's no way to say you should feel like this inside your body obviously when you go as far out as you can you're going to feel like there's a lot of effort going into the call but my max effort compared to somebody else's max effort that's their individual tendency um, so we're not going to get into that but this is the exercise to find it. Okay, so the key point to remember, got to get the voice, scratch, however you want to term it, get that going. With the hands in the same position, voice to clear the voice. hand position does not change this call is designed to be ran with your hands in the same position that you learn to get the scratch out of it then you simply keep going with the effort and turn off the voice and go into the clear but you don't have to change your hands <laughs> Not much hand change between voice and clear and that's a good thing. It makes the transitioning from scratch into yodels very easy because you're not having to change many